Jeremy, this is Micah from Kelly Blue Book. Hey, uh, doing well? Yeah, you remember that tire pressure warning thing that we got? Yeah, we got a big ass nail in the right rear tire. At this moment, I don't realize it, but the next 36 hours will be a challenging emotional roller coaster. And it all starts with a single screw. Our goal is to drive a Tesla Model S electric car from LA to Las Vegas. It should be a piece of cake. Here's what actually happened. Earlier in the morning, we'd met up with Jeremy Snyder at Tesla's Design Center in Hawthorne, California to get a thorough rundown of the Model S. We wanted to make something that feels kind of like plugging in a Macintosh laptop. This charges at a rate of 90 kilowatts. It really makes long distance driving a reality. It has a 0.24 coefficient of drag. 100% torque from all RPMs, Bluetooth connectivity, retractable door handles, up or down the temperature with the scroll wheel, full web connectivity, trunk, 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 roof is lock on lock. Browser capability, no, you cannot watch movies on it. Hold the roof down, it'll roll down all the windows. Uh, your energy consumption, space. Shows your projected range, higher driving, will dictate how far you'll be able to go. Oh boy. Overflowing with Tesla-related knowledge, we headed out. Hmm, so quiet. The gauge cluster's cool. Three, two, one. Son of a bitch. Woo! <laughs> oh, wow. Huh. Okay. So that's how it's gonna be. That, that, that was like um, almost like weird theme park acceleration. My palms are a little sweaty. Shortly after hitting the freeway, we noticed some odd handling leading to the screw discovery. Well, we have only 24 hours with the car, uh, much of which is being spent on the 405 waiting to squeeze to the Tesla facilities where they'll uh, swap out the tire or repair it. And then at some point after that, we'll actually start driving. Originally, the plan was to pick up the Model S, drive it to Barstow, use the supercharger, and blast on to Vegas, no problem. With 260 plus miles of range, it would have been easy. Now, we have 156 miles, which is way less than what we started because we had to do this big detour to have the tire fixed. This is the moment where I out myself as having no faith. If you look here, it shows that we have 86 miles to go until Barstow and 110 miles of range. You think, well, 24 miles of surplus, that ought to be enough, right? Yeah, but if you look right here, there's this really steep grade that we have to go up. Rather than get stuck in the middle of nowhere and have camera god Mike Delano start crying, and I don't want to have to see him cry, we're going to go find uh, some very, very near charge ports over at a Coles and hang out for just a little bit and get some range slash faith. Okay, so now we're charging. We're going to go off and uh, screw around a little bit. Check this out. This is like about an eighty thousand dollar car. Do you meet guys fit in the back? It's <laughs> 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 like a ride. <laughs> it's with three big butcher guys on board too, so it, it's it, it's instant torque anytime. So just floored. Fifty-five right there, bam. Even with three hefty butchers on board, Model S is seriously quick. Granted, we're driving the fastest 85 kilowatt hour performance model, but even the base model with the 40 kilowatt hour battery knocks out a rapid 6.5 second zero to 60 run. We have 62 miles of range, but we have 63 miles to go until we get to Barstow. Either we will definitely not make it or we might not make it. If you look right here, it's the steepest part of the hill. The unsettling part is when you look up here at the projected 25 mile range. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm pretty sure we'll get to Victorville. I'm not sure if we're gonna to get to Barstow. One thing that's not gonna happen is we're not gonna just breeze into Barstow with a ton of electric range left. Is that Barstow? Here we are. I'm pretty dang sure we would not have made it if we hadn't stopped at that Coles back there and recharged. If you had a really important call you had to make and that was all charge you have, wouldn't you be concerned? Now imagine that that's the amount of charge you needed to 
not be stuck in the desert in the middle of the night. This is a good moment to point out that Tesla fully supports the practice of supercharging. They were quick to point out that the Model S was built with quick DC charging in mind and that the battery is intelligent enough not to damage itself. If you're still concerned, remember, there's an 8-year battery warranty with varying mileage limitations to supplement the 4-year, 50,000-mile vehicle warranty. So when we left Barstow, we had 200 plus miles of range thinking, ah, oh, we only have to cover like 150 miles, so this should be really, really easy. Right now, we're about 21 miles away from Las Vegas with a total range of 26 miles. Apparently going up and down all those hills and maybe having both the seat heaters on and needing to have the heater on because it's 30 something degrees outside has depleted the batteries more quickly than we could have possibly imagined. So now we're, we're really kind of close. Looks like we made it to Vegas. Although with only nine miles of range, and we haven't actually arrived at the hotel yet. Nine miles, I wonder what it's gonna be by the time we get there. Down to seven miles. Six. Six? We're now down to four. Aha, electric vehicle charging station. Four miles. If there hadn't been charging stations here, we would have had four miles to find an alternative. Yeah, so even if, if um, we charged this for 10 hours, we'd have a 140 mile range that wouldn't get us back to Barstow. <laughs> oh, oh man. Ah, it's almost like the shoot was doomed from the beginning. Eight and a half hours later, and we've consumed 51.86 kilowatts of power, which equates to 155 miles of range. Apparently, the charging system that we're using here is inferior. We've been told by the people at Tesla that where we should be is at the Green Valley Ranch and Resort, where it should charge about twice as fast. Waiting for the battery to charge gives you a chance to think. One thought that keeps coming to mind is Tesla's willingness to rethink the fundamentals. Unburdened from gasoline powertrain bulk, the Model S dazzles with a staggering amount of cargo space. There's also no engine start button, an omission initially disconcerting that quickly makes as much sense as ditching the CD player. With key in pocket, you just press the brake, put the car in drive, and go. Are there shortcomings? Yep. The interior is attractive enough, but material quality could be better. The weirdly low turn signal stock borrowed from Mercedes is no better in the Model S. The armrests are hard. The huge optional panoramic sunroof doesn't have integrated sunshades, and rear seat headroom is tight if you're taller than average or have good posture. Then again, most of those issues disappear in the glow of the standard 17-inch touchscreen. It's a remarkable interface, and not just due to sheer size. The touchscreen works with gloved hands, the icons are instantly intuitive, the display is easily reconfigurable, its screen is bright and vivid, and the system reacts to taps, pinch, and drag gestures with snappy immediacy. It's almost certainly the best vehicle infotainment system available. For it, we're willing to overlook middling plastics. So after about three and a half hours plus, we have 225 miles of range with which to make it back to Barstow. Now that's actually less than we had yesterday, and we barely breathed into town, but per Tesla's suggestion, we're gonna set the cruise control between 55 and 60, and that should enable us to easily make it to Barstow with plenty of charge to spare. We're cruising up the big hill just coming out of Prim, Nevada. Uh, the cruise control is set at 58 miles per hour. The temperature is set at a very modest 73. And uh, according to the projected range here, uh, we've only got 68 miles left, but we have 103 miles to go. Yeah, isn't halfway between here and Boston good enough? Ah, oh, jeez. Hey, we made it to Barstow, or actually a little beyond Barstow, where the Tesla supercharger is. We have 43 miles of range left. So we actually could have left an hour, an hour and a half a little bit earlier, but we didn't know exactly how much buffer we had. The sacrifices it took to get that extra 43 miles of range include driving at a truly offensive 58 miles an hour with the cruise control set. It was really, really hard, because not only do you take forever to get where you're going, 
but it's hard to maintain focus because the drive is so boring. We're only about an hour and 20 minutes into the charging and look, we have 272 miles of range. All we have to do is eat some ribs in this chilies and we have essentially a full battery. You know what that means? We only have 120 miles to go to return the car. We are gonna haul so much ass. With battery range vastly greater than our needs, we were free to drive the final Barstow to Hawthorne leg as fast as we liked. Then something wonderful happened. We got to experience the Tesla Model S as it was intended. Right now is the first time in the entire time we've had the vehicle where we're completely unencumbered by the issues of range or time. Since we've totally blown our deadline of getting the car back at noon today and then our later deadline of four today, it's coming up on 10 o'clock, um, we're utterly free, it's kind of nice. And we have a projected range of 130 miles, but we only have to go 50, which means we can uh, drive as fast and stupid and as toasty as we feel like. But once you get away from the cross-country range anxiety issues, uh, it's just brilliant. No engine noise, the gentle whoosh of the tires, it's fully customizable. I want sportier steering. If you need to get around somebody, it just picks up speed so fast. Hey look, we made it back with plenty of charge to spare before we finally hand the thing back in for the last time. <laughs> ah, man, what a cool electric car. So what did we learn from our little adventure? Well, if we wanted to get touchy-feely, I could point out that unlike a gasoline car, you really have to consider energy management when driving long distances in a Tesla Model S. Perhaps it's not so bad to think about where your power comes from and how you'll use it. For a broader takeaway, think about the Model T, the early internet, and the first iPhone. Each looks crude in retrospect, but they represent a fundamental shift in thinking. In similar fashion, the Model S shows that electric cars can work, letting normal people drive in the style they're accustomed. And much like the first-gen iPhone, there's room to improve. For us, driving electric to Vegas felt like island hopping, and boy can it feel lonely in the oceans between charging stations. But despite all the challenges, we truly love the Model S, and with any luck, time will smooth the rough edges. Charging infrastructure will expand, while batteries will become more powerful and charge more quickly. The updatable nature of the Model S also means improvements in the short term. In a follow-up call to Tesla, a representative confirmed that topography-aware range projections, something we desperately wished for on a drive, were already in the pipeline for existing and future cars. With a little luck, it'll be ready for our next Tesla trip to Vegas.